Mr. President, did you have enough information on Judge Ginsburg when you nominated him, sir? Sir. sir. Yes, we have thoroughly gone over all of the candidates. He was one of three that was very closely rated, and I'm satisfied with the appointment. You're not concerned about these allegations that he was involved in a cable <laughs> franchise or had no. cable interest or a cable press? No. Well, why interest. did you pick him before he had a thorough FBI Pardon. and Check. I had asked the president to come to see these things, and I know there will be a later time when he can answer them for you and we'll be pleased to. And I hope you'll hold your questions for us. Thank you. Could you promise? Well, I hope that there will be a time. You do too. Thank you. Thank you. Illegal narcotics are the number one problem in the United States today, and probably in the entire world. Not only are they very serious health hazards in themselves, but they also have very serious side effects. See it lower our national productivity. It corrupts especially our young people. We also see that it increases violent crimes. In a 10 year study, a thousand drug addicts committed over 500,000 crimes in order to support their habits. As of January of 1982, the FBI has received concurrent jurisdiction with the Drug Enforcement Administration. So we now work together to fight drug trafficking. You see on this table some major types of drugs the heroin, cocaine, Marijuana, prescription drugs, man-made drugs. This is an LSD press who was confiscated in a drug bus, once capable of producing about 250 LSD tablets per minute. In the photographs in the wall, you can see some of the typical investigations that are taking place now, including undercover work, surveillance, phony deals. For the first time, we have major long-range goal programs designed to educate especially young people teach them to say no to drugs. Show also the consequences. Jail, sickness, even death. See, so this is a very serious problem. Thank you very much. I just keep this one. And here's something else that. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Rosalind Hurst, and I'll be explaining our four issues to display. The four issues to display is designed to inform the public that crime does not pay. The government's ability to seize property for forfeiture comes principally from the racketeering influence corrupt organization statute of 1970, the Comprehensive Crime Control Act of 1984, and the Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1986. The items before you were seized from narcotics operations, specifically the silver bars, which were seized in Miami, Florida in 1985, and valued at approximately $700 each. The statue depicting the four cowboys was seized in Sacramento, California. A drug dealer paid $30,000 for the statue because he thought it was an original Remington. This is not a Remington, it's only valued at $3,000. This is an 18 karat gold <laughs> custom designed hourglass that drops diamonds instead of sand. It was seized in San Francisco, California, and it's valued at approximately $22,000. And you may say, well, what happens to the property? Sometimes it's sold, sometimes a small amount of the property is retained by the FBI for official bureau use, and sometimes the property is shared by participating state and local law enforcement agencies under the authority of the Attorney General. To date, the largest amount of property shared is a tract of land valued at approximately $6 million. It was seized by the FBI for forfeiture, and the land was later turned over to the Orange County, California Sheriff's Office. Today, it's being used as a training facility. Proceeds from the sale of property forfeited is deposited into the Department of Justice Assets and Forfeitures Fund, and sometimes this money is used to fight against organized crime. The FBI has seized and has processed for forfeiture property valued over $300 million. Forfeiture is a significant tool in the fight against the organized criminal element, and as you can see, Mr. President, it works. Mr. President, 1987 marks the 50th anniversary of the FBI tour. It may interest you to know that in June of 1937, our first official guests were Boy Scouts. Each year, over a half million people visit the FBI tour. And on our anniversary, a special pin was designed and a limited number made, and we would like to present this pin to you.
President of the United States, accompanied by Attorney General Meese and Judge Sessions. achievements of the Bureau. The FBI's success of installing as director of that FBI a man who embodies all of those qualities which the Bureau represents. He has served his nation in many capacities, as a high-ranking Justice Department official, as a United States attorney, and as a distinguished federal judge. In all of these times, when Judge when Judge John Wood of Texas was brutally murdered during a sensational trial, he took the task of presiding in Judge Wood's place. And then he later presided at the on the task of directing the most skilled, competent, and dedicated law enforcement personnel that can be found anywhere in the world. When I introduced Bill Sessions to the press just after his nomination had been announced by the president, as I mentioned earlier today in the private lesson, Bill Webster did such an outstanding job for the greeting you are enthusiastic welcome and all of our encouragement as you enter upon your very serious duty. Good luck. Especially do we call before you your servant, Bill Sessions. We give thanks for his